guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be talking about a really dumb Twitter thread. I don't discuss every dumb Twitter thread because if I was going to do that, we'd be here until the end of time. We all know that Twitter is a place for dumb takes, toxic takes, just trash. Why am I still there? Probably because I hate myself, I don't know. Anyway, I saw this thread and the reason why I wanted to talk about this thread specifically is because it's not just, in my opinion, dumb, but it's inconsistent. And the biggest thing of all is that I think it perpetuates a very toxic and negative mindset, point of view, stereotypes, like. Any word that you can think of that perpetuates just like the wrong type of thinking. And when I say wrong type of thinking, obviously, according to me, you can make up your own mind. I'm going to be blurring out the username of the person who made these tweets. If you know who it is or if you find out who it is, by no means do I condone sending hate if you want to comment and have a civil conversation, that is a different story. I wanna preface this with one thing. A couple years ago, oh geez, I've, more than a couple of years ago, I didn't really understand the concept of toxic masculinity, mainly because nobody had really ever talked to me about it, which says something. But anyway, I didn't understand it. I just wanna be clear that in the past, I've had different opinions They've changed, thank God. I think it's obvious, but I just wanna point that out in case. So this person went on a Twitter rant. The thread is long. At the end of the thread, there are quote tweets where the person is responding to people responding to their tweet. I'm not gonna read the quote tweets because frankly, I want to get to the crux of the point they're making. While I don't want men to completely avoid it, seeing a man cry does turn me off. I'm seeing the pendulum swing from men shouldn't cry to a man crying has zero effect on his attractiveness and neither of these are true. So from the get go, I was just not on board with this argument and I read the whole thing because I was like, okay, maybe there's a turning point where I can see, you know, where we can meet eye to eye. That doesn't happen, plot twist. I think it's weird that when a man cries, the first thing you think is, is this attractive to me? Or this makes them less attractive to me? To me, the first thing that I think of when anyone cries, any gender, any whatever, is how can I comfort them? How can I make this better? Maybe they need to talk. Like, I think for most people, the reaction is to think about the well being of the person who's upset as opposed to how attractive you think they are because they're crying. If we're gonna talk about men crying being attractive or not, that's already toxic because nobody is supposed to think about attractiveness when someone's crying. Like that's the last thing anyone should be thinking about. There are times when it is warranted for a man to cry in front of a female potential partner. I can't say when and why because this is highly contextual example of when it would turn me off. During early days, unless something traumatic happened like we were on the Titanic, Examples of when I suspect it would have little to no effect or bring us closer, funerals, injuries, loss, financial, etc. Periods of high stress, other specific times. To be clear, I'm speculating and these are only specific to me, not instructions or rules for when it's okay for men to cry, okay? I imagine this is highly variable depending on the person and relationship, but I am skeptical of any woman who says it doesn't affect attractiveness. Here, there's already a contradiction because she's saying this is just my personal opinion, blah, blah, blah. But then it's also like, I don't believe that other women who say it doesn't affect how they see the attractiveness of said man. In effect, you're saying, I don't trust other women's judgment if they say that they're not less attracted to a man if he cries. So you're saying it's not a rule, but then again, you're also doubting other women's judgment, even though you said it's specific to you. So which one is it? Honestly, and this is just my opinion, I prefer men that are in touch with their feelings. 
mainly because I know how much it sucks to bottle things up. I I think we've all bottled things up and we all know that it never really ends well. It ends up exploding in some way. It ends up coming to a meltdown. I don't wanna have rules for you of when you can or can't cry. If you're just stressed out, if you're having a panic attack, if you just feel overwhelmed with your life and you wanna cry and nothing terrible has happened like a funeral or some massive financial loss, cry. Basically, I don't think I should be underlining when my partner can cry or not. I feel like that's absolutely ridiculous. That is very much still in line with toxic masculinity because you're basically underlining the fact of, yeah, men can cry, but these are the ones I find acceptable. These are the times it's still attractive to me. The reason that my husband and I work so well together is because we're both sensitive so we can understand each other very well. So if I start crying for apparently no reason, he can understand that because he, he's sensitive and has empathy. That's not coming off here. And I think it would be terrible, genuinely terrible to have a partner. Imagine you're having a hard time mentally. You're having a panic attack that comes out of nowhere. I cry when I have my panic attacks, okay? Imagine having a partner who's just looking at you thinking, this is not attractive. This wouldn't overwhelm me. So like, why are they overwhelmed? Like how unempathetic is that? Is this just social conditioning? Something to be deconstructed? Something I need to get comfy with and eventually it will go away? I don't think so. I think there are deep and valid evolutionary reasons for this. Women are biologically wired to cry more than men. I should be able to trust a male partner's level-headedness in joint decisions when I'm beside myself with grief, pregnant, in labor, sleep deprived, sick, etc. This is very attractive in a male partner. Conversely, if a male partner cries in a situation where I think I wouldn't cry, I sense that he is not dependable in a crisis and I will be in charge of making decisions for both of us. Since I have higher estrogen levels, this asks me to exert a tremendous amount of restraint. Biology, evolutionary, science, whatever you want to refer to, at the end of the day, I just think if you feel like you need to cry, cry. A lot of the times it can be cathartic and you get past things as opposed to restraining yourself and forcing yourself not to. Second of all, is being sleep deprived okay for men to cry about? Because this person seems to have very particular rules of when men can cry. Is sleep deprived enough for them? Because I feel like that wouldn't count as a valid reason for men in this person's mind. I also don't think it's fair that a woman basically has the right to cry for anything because of estrogen and then men can only have like select crying reasons because of how we are biologically set up. I, I'm sorry, I just don't think that's correct. And I don't think that makes for a fair relationship either because in any relationship, whether it's hetero or not, but these are all referring to hetero ones, I'm assuming, each person should have the right to express themselves the way they need to. Now, obviously not violently, but aside from that, if someone cries more or cries a lot or has the tendency to cry a lot, they should be allowed to do that without you judging them for it. And if you judge people for that, you should make it very clear at the very beginning of a relationship that that is how you are because I feel like this is just a very toxic mentality. Wouldn't you rather someone who can express themselves even if it's through crying rather than someone who bottles everything up and just like explodes at random moments or just never expresses themselves? Like, can you imagine the burden on someone to just be quiet all the time? Not thinking a male partner is dependable in a situation of crisis just because they're overwhelmed by something that doesn't overwhelm you is ridiculous because first of all, do I need to point out the very obvious thing of we're all different, we're all triggered by different things. Depending on experiences and traumas, you're gonna be triggered by certain things that to some people seem like nothing and to some people make complete sense. So if someone's overwhelmed and you wouldn't be overwhelmed and that's kind of your basis of determining whether someone is good for you is, not only I think improbable to find that you're gonna find someone who's overwhelmed by the exact same things as you, 
But second of all, relationships are a two-way street. I have no problem of taking charge when things aren't going well on my partner's side. So if my partner's having a hard time, I have no problem taking charge because I know that he does the same for me. And I mean, like, I think it's the same even with friendships and families, the same with my family. I know I have this relationship with my mom where we can balance each other out. So if she's having a hard time or is, you know, like mad, sad, whatever about something, I can be level-headed and the other way around so we balance each other out. And I think that's how partnerships should be as opposed to, oh, if he's overwhelmed by this when we're in a crisis, me, a poor woman who can't do anything, has to take charge, which I think also undermines women, but... I'm not gonna go into that argument because we're gonna be here forever. It basically tells me that he's going to hoard the emotional space that I need in order to be embodied. Yes, this is a turnoff. I'm trying to be careful with my wording, but I suspect some people think I'm just stuck in harmful trad values, perpetuating toxic masculinity. So let me say it out loud and clear. Men should cry. Many men should cry more and more often. There are many instances where I would expect and appreciate a display of grief in the form of tears and even sobbing from a man. My intent is not to shame anyone. I think there are loads of reasons for guys to cry, and sometimes they might seem unwarranted to a woman when they aren't. What I'm trying to say is that it's good if you can cope and tend to the grief at an appropriate time, i.e. not a first date. You won't get any extra points for being sensitive by crying easily or early in the relationship. Not from me, probably not from many women. It just makes her feel like you won't have her back when she needs you to, unless she wants to be your mommy, but that's a whole an other thread. The thing is, there are so many things in this thread that I think perpetuate toxic masculinity. The fact that this person had to underline the fact that they're trying not to perpetuate toxic masculinity is ridiculous because even here it says, unless she wants to be your mommy. And it's like having a guy cry doesn't mean that you suddenly have to be their mommy. You can just be a supportive person. You can be there for them. Obviously, someone crying on the first date, I'm not gonna lie, that would be uncomfortable because like you're still getting to know the person so you don't know how to comfort them necessarily. You don't know necessarily why they're crying as opposed to if you've been dating them for a year, you know their traumas, you know, you know, whatever might be triggering to them. So it's a different story. I understand that. If I were on a first date with a guy and he told me something about his childhood that was really traumatizing and he started crying, would I judge him for that? No. And would I think he's less attractive for that? No. I think what it comes down to is that everyone, men, women, whatever, everyone has to find a way to cope with things because obviously not, you can't cry at everything, right? Because otherwise nothing's ever gonna get done if you're crying all the time. So you have to find ways to cope. Now, people go to therapy for this. Sometimes you just figure it out yourself and that's a different story. But to ask for people to not basically emote because it's, not a turn on to you. I'm sorry, I have to say it, but if a man made this tweet, people would be fucking shitting themselves. And now people are still mad about this tweet, don't get me wrong, but I mean, like if a man said, oh, I don't think a woman should cry unless I think she should cry or I would be overwhelmed by the situation, I don't think anyone would respond very well. And thankfully people here are calling us out as toxic, which I do think it is. Again, everyone has their own preferences and that's fine, but I do think that in this thread there is a lot of contradiction and a lot of toxic masculinity. Whether they want to admit it or not, it's there. You guys can let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>